Thank you for joining the webinar. Today the topic is airtime fairness on AP 900-115. This is the outline. First, I'll tell you how we set up the test environment. Uh, without airtime fairness, we do the Wi-Fi performance test. And then we enable airtime fairness and do the Wi-Fi performance test again. And then we compare the results. Based on the results, I start to explain how airtime fairness works. Sometimes there could be some uh, exceptions of airtime fairness. Based on these uh, test results, I also explain the exceptions of airtime fairness. Then the summary and the QA. Before we proceed uh, to our content, there is an important notice. Uh, the following Wi-Fi performance you're going to see, uh, they are not intended uh, or necessary to be considered as Draytech access point performance benchmark due to these reasons. First, uh, the station the link rate, they are 130 megabits per second and 65 megabit per second only. Uh, that means they are not running uh, with the full link rate. Also, the laptops we use, they are random ones without promise of good performance. In fact, uh, we even put in some slow laptops to demonstrate the exception case. So they may lower the overall performance. And also there were other APs nearby using different channels. So mainly uh, we are focusing on the uh, improvements brought by airtime fairness in this session. So let's proceed. Uh, this is the blueprint of our test environment. This is a big meeting room in Draytech, and there are four other meeting rooms. First, uh, we put an AP900 right at this corner, and it has the IP address in the uh, 38 subnet. And then we put four laptops here. Uh, they have IP address from 38.110, to 38.140, and there's another three laptops here, IP address from 150 to 170. They received the Wi-Fi signal from the AP900, and their link rate are uh, 130. At the same time, there is another laptop at the corner, uh, the IP address is 210. You can see on the blueprint, there are two doors in between these two spaces. So I keep these doors closed, and in order to receive a Wi-Fi signal, those Wi-Fi signal has to travel through the two closed doors. In this case, the link rate of this laptop is only 65 megabit per second. Then I put a PC here connected to the Ethernet port on the AP900. It runs JPerf as the client, and all the laptops they are the JPerf servers. So we test the Wi-Fi performance with the JPerf and the direction is from LAN to wireless LAN. It's like the download traffic for those stations. So these are the seven laptops we had and this is the AP900 running 115RC6. The reason uh, we were using 115RC6 is because at the time we set up this test, the 115 was not released yet. And this is the laptop with the bad link rate. This is JPerf tool we used. You can see uh, we run five sessions for 60 seconds on each of them. Before we show you the test result, I want to talk about the theory about airtime. Theory number one, uh, each channel can be accessed by only one station at a time. And each station they has equal priority to access the channel. So if the theory works, in our case, we have eight stations. They should use the airtime equally. And if we have 20 stations, uh, we don't list out the percentage. You can just see it. Uh, it's a beautiful figure. They have the same uh, percentage of the time. So now let's take a look about our test results. Basically, we test three times. Test one, test two, test three. You can see the result for each of them. And this is the average for each station. So the subtotal means the total from 110 to 170. These are the seven laptops with good link rate. And 210 is the laptop with poor link rate. 
and a total means all these eight laptops combined. So this is our test result. What we can find uh, apparently is these two guys, uh, 110 or 170, they got very poor performance. Uh, you can imagine if you watch the high quality video on YouTube, the 1080p video, you probably will feel the stall. So this is what we found. Uh, some stations, they may feel the stall. So based on this average, uh, we make another chart here. This is the performance ratio compared to the total performance. So we can say uh, some stations, they are good at occupying the airtime. So we can call them the airtime occupier. For example, this 130, he uses almost 20% of the performance. So he's really good at occupying the airtime. So we can draw this pie chart without airtime fairness. And compare it to the theory. So you can see uh, some stations, uh, they are good at occupying the airtime. Like these two, 120 and 130, they use out too much of the airtime. So you can see that 110 and 170, they barely got airtime. Compared to the theory of partition they should get. Then we enable the airtime. Again, uh, we test three times. And we can see apparently these two, 110 and 170, they got improved. With this kind of performance, we can say uh, they won't feel the stall anymore if they are watching the high quality video on YouTube. And again, uh, based on the average number, uh, we count this performance ratio. And then we draw this pie chart again. So compared to the theory, we are getting closer to theory now. You can see a 110, 170, they got more airtime now. And 112 got decreased, also 130 got decreased. So overall, uh, we are getting closer to the theory. So comparison in between. First, uh, we compare the individual performance. That means these two uh, individual performance. Let's take a look. Uh, we count on difference and the individual improvement. You can see uh, like 160, uh, it got almost 200% improvement. Also this 110, 100% improvement. And we can found that this 120, he's the only one with good link rate got decreased. And also there's another one got decreased. That's the one with bad link rate. Other stations with good link rate, they all got improved. That's what we found from this chart. So we can draw this chart with our airtime fairness and with airtime fairness. Again, you can see uh, almost each of them got improved except 120. So uh, we can say a uh, station with good link rate, uh, they now have better chance to get better Wi-Fi performance. So if we move, rearrange the sequence, we move uh, 160 to the center and move 140 to the right side, we can get a more uh, centralized figure. Uh, this is blue one without airtime fairness, and this is green one with airtime fairness. You can see the green one doesn't have that kind of extreme number like the blue one has. So it's more equalized and also more high, higher performance, better than the blue one. So these, that was the individual performance. Now we take a look at the individual performance ratio. That's these two columns. So let's draw the pie chart again. So with real-time fairness and without real-time fairness, I can say stations have more equalized performance. So assuming they are have the same hardware speed. Let's say if they, the seven laptops, they are actually identical. So a more equalized performance can be related to more equalized airtime. I know uh, we didn't use the same laptops, but let's just assume if they were the same, uh, the more equalized performance can be related 
to more equalized airtime. Seems it's actually very hard to monitor the airtime for each of the stations. So we use this performance ratio to get the closer result. So again, we can draw this chart with our airtime fairness and with airtime fairness. So what we can find is some stations they got improved and some stations got decreased. And overall, they got more uh, equalized. So the station with good link rate, they have better chance to get more equalized airtime. Also, we rearrange the sequence and draw this chart again. This time you see uh, the green one is more equalized. It doesn't have the extreme number and they all share a more equalized result. And this is, this is another way to uh, illustrate the percentage of each stations. I especially want to emphasize these two parts. Uh, these parts consist of the seven laptops with good link rate. You can see um, before uh, we enable airtime fairness, they have 87% uh, of the overall performance. After we enable the airtime fairness, they now share the almost 91% of the overall performance. So that means the AP is now more dedicated to the stations which have good link rate. Let's compare this part, uh, subtotal. You got 22.24% improvement. And the one with bad link rate, it got 16, 64% deduction. The overall improvement is 17, 70%. So how it works? This is the GUI on AP. If you go to wireless LAN, airtime status, the access point will show all the airtime results for each station. So how it works? Uh, it works by dropping the packets, which is shows right here, the control packets. So once the packets got controlled, the airtime got decreased. Let's take a look. This is one moment uh, we, we took during the test. Uh, we can compare index number one. It, it was using 34% of the air, total airtime. And also this, this group. So after a few seconds, we took another screenshot. So you can compare. Uh, it used to be 96 packets got controlled, and now it got increased to 119. So it, it got controlled more packets. So the airtime got decreased. And also this guy, uh, it used to be 44 packets got controlled. And during the period of time, ACS point controlled almost 50 more packets. So the airtime also decreased for 5%. And if you compare to this one, uh, index number six, it isn't got control. So, and the airtime was increased. Also this one, it used to be 47 and still it remains as 47. That means during the, this period of time, uh, this station didn't got controlled and the airtime got increased. So it's like uh, the access point stops some stations from using the airtime, so other stations, they got more chance to use the airtime. Also, the JPROF visualized the airtime fairness. This is the 210. It occupied the airtime as the convex part. And also the access point controlled the airtime, that's the concave part. So the JPROF visualized the airtime fairness. Still, there are some exceptions of the airtime fairness. Before uh, we show you, we look into the exceptions, we want to emphasize this part. On the GUI, uh, you can click the airtime fairness. There's a pop-up window that shows about some notes for airtime fairness. We especially want to emphasize this part, the suitable environment. First, there should be many wireless stations. And those stations, they are mainly using the download traffic. Also, the performance bottleneck is wireless connection. That means uh, if you your laptops they are really slow, then the airtime fans cannot help you. 
if your laptops they are fast and you are still experiencing the stall, then the airtime fitness can help you. Let's take a look about this guy at 120. He's the only one got decreased after enabling airtime fitness. Why? So to look into this, we did, we did some more tests. Basically, we test this guy alone. We give this guy the full airtime, see how fast he can run. And we found that this guy was only running at, so you can see, a 36 megabits per second. If we compare it to this guy 130, uh, the full speed is more than 90 megabits per second. So they got huge difference in the speed. So that means this, this guy 120, this is, this is the slower PC. We don't know the reason why this is slow. Could be the slower processor or some other problems inside. We don't know. But in this case, the bottleneck is not the Wi-Fi. So the airtime fitness cannot help. We can check this group performance results. Let's take a look. Uh, on the upper right corner is the 120. You can see this guy is really good at occupying the airtime. It, it was always trying to occupy the airtime. That's the convex. So AP had no choice but start to control this guy. Since the 120 got less airtime, it's even slower. So this is why this guy got slower, because the bottleneck was not the Wi-Fi. So the summary. First, after enabling airtime fairness, each station has better chance to acquire airtime. Again, compare the theory. This is without airtime fairness. Some stations, they are good at occupying the airtime, so they use all most of the airtime. After we enable the airtime, we are now getting closer to the theory. And summary number two, it improves the overall Wi-Fi performance in most of the cases. The stations with good link rate got increased, and stations with poor link rate got decreased. So there's a hint. In the central AP management load balance, we can set the force overload dissociation by signal strength. So it keeps the stations find out the APs with good link rate. So we can avoid the stations with poor link rate got decreased cases. Summary number three. Uh, not all stations got controlled. Uh, we can say the airtime fairness is actually robbing the rich and helping the poor in the airtime, not in performance. Let's take a look of this group, the performance result again. Uh, we can see the 140 on this corner. It's actually faster than 120. It's, it was running at nine, almost 10 megabit per second. You can see it barely got controlled. And compared to 120 again, uh, it was it was getting controlled all the time. And also this one, uh, sorry, 130 here, it was it was running at the speed with more than 10 megabit per second. And you can see it got controlled only around this time. And the rest of the parts, it barely got controlled. So uh, not every station will get controlled dramatically. Only uh, the guy occupying too much airtime will get controlled.